Hey guys, I'm Nathan from Arms and Armor. You know, sometimes we get asked about whether medieval swords had gems on them, right? Were there bejeweled hilts? And this question comes up because of popular culture, fantasy, television is always showing swords covered in gemstones, right? And the truth is that in the medieval period, this was extremely rare, right? Prior to the medieval period, during the migration period or dark ages, right, we had some high prestige swords that had semi-precious stones in them, like the famous Sutton Hu sword, which is gold and uh, garnet inlay into, the, into it. Uh, but by the medieval period, it's really, really rare, right? There's a different aesthetic going on with medieval swords that's usually quite stark right? A sword is a cross. And uh, the decoration for those pieces was more likely to be uh, chisel work, uh, engraving, acid etching later on, uh, or just the application of some gilding or silvering onto a piece if it was a high prestige item. By the Renaissance, we start to see some jeweled pieces, uh, but they're very rare. So today, I have a number of pieces from the Oakshot Institute collection uh, that are jeweled in one way or another uh, that we'll talk through. Stay tuned. All right, I have one actually medieval piece that is jeweled, right? So this is a little rondelle dagger uh, that was found in association with a sword in the Oakshot collection uh, in France. This is right, probably 14th century, uh, and you can see that inset in the hilt, there is a semi-precious stone of some kind, maybe tiger eye or something like that, in the pommel of this piece. Uh, that's actually pretty rare uh, for this uh, time period. It wasn't something that happened all the time, right? But when it did, it was usually something like this, right? Not like a faceted gemstone like we see today all the time. Gem cutting uh, was way less advanced in the medieval period. Gems were usually more like a cabochon, like a rounded polished stone than a faceted cut stone. Uh, so you would occasionally have something like this. They were also super expensive, right? As they are today. What, you're gonna put a giant diamond on there? You don't have the money to put a giant diamond on there. And if you did, you probably wouldn't wanna wear it around uh, because you'd get mugged <laughs> and it'll be stolen from you, right? But this is a cool piece that's actually medieval that has a decorative stone inset in it. I've got a few other pieces that aren't medieval, uh, but that are more early modern, that have a jeweled appearance that I want to show you. So this is a German hanger or hunting sword that has the grip made from cut agate. And so this is probably 17th century, uh, maybe early 18th century. Uh, it's a piece of cut stone crystal mounted onto a silver hilt on this little hanger or hunting sword. So this weapon is clearly not a weapon of war. And you can see the nice translucence of that. You can see the tang through it. Instead, this is a decorative piece, right? Maybe someone wore it uh, for some kind of functions, right? But it's basically jewelry. And you can see this blade is in fantastic condition and it has clearly never been fought with. Another interesting piece is this small sword. You can see how sparkly it is. Right? It shines and sparkles. Uh, 
it gives the impression of being inset with some kind of gems, but it's really, it's just cut and faceted steel that's polished. You see it, this pommel is actually cracked and it's made in two pieces, it's hollow, uh, but it's reasonably stable, right? But, so this chain is just faceted steel that's shiny, so that when you walk around with it in, you know, maybe eh, 1750, something like that, you'd have a bunch of bling hanging off of your hip. This too, this sword is evening wear, right? It's jewelry. It's functional. And it's got this nice hollow ground, triangular blade. This thing you know, weighs nothing. It's an elegant uh, weapon. I find it a bit gaudy, right? But it's pretty cool. And so this is jeweled, right, in certain ways. It's got bling, it's got flash to it. Finally, I've got this piece, which is a uh, 19th century American Bowie knife, uh, which is pretty cool. It's a recent addition to the Oakshot Institute collection, probably from California. And this grip is made entirely of what I think is petrified wood, right? So it's stone carved to be a grip on this Bowie knife, which is a descendant of the German Messer in many ways. So it's related, right? Sometimes on Messers, right, you had a long pommel on them that could be quite decorative, often chiseled uh, or engraved of a kind of similar form to this. This one's a, a coffin gripped Bowie knife. It's called because of the coffin shape of it. Now, there are examples in art that are, you know, very pretty. So here we have, uh, it's a little bit hard to see, but it is a hunting set with turquoise uh, inset on it, right? So this is, this book is the Dresden Court, 1580 to 1620. So these are, this is a princely hunting sword set that does have semi-precious stones and gold uh, set into it. And here are a couple of rapiers that have some kind of cut decoration it could be semi-precious stones. It could also be glass uh, that's been cut and inlaid. So these ones are in Army Bianchi Italiani, uh, right? So these are 17th century. Um, not medieval though, right? In the medieval period, if you wanted to decorate a sword, right, you were likely to do it with inlays, right? So you could either inlay something like a disc in the pommel that would be, you know, what we'd call bronze today, they would have called it latine. Uh, so a copper alloy that would be highlighted against the steel, or you could do inlay in gold or silver, right? or in a different contrasting metal, you could do decorative chisel work, and we'll do a whole nother, uh, you know, little uh, video blog about decorated uh, medieval and Renaissance pieces in the Oakshot collection, uh, but not really jewels. Now, I'm sure there are some, right? Bearing sword of the Holy Roman Emperor or something, right? Crown jewels, swords that literally have royal jewels in them exist, but they weren't for using, right? They were decorative pieces because they were worth a fortune and you're probably not gonna go fight with something like that. Uh, it's a great way to lose it. All right, thanks very much, guys. Take care.